Hi, my name is Evan Harrison and I'm a high school teacher at Chimicum High School. And Chimicum is up the road here. We're in Port Townsend, Washington for the Port Townsend Film Festival. So my background is in commercial arts and also fine arts. I have a Master's of Fine Arts from Massachusetts College of Art and Design in Boston, Massachusetts, and it's a state school, and after which I did a number of different jobs, sort of floated around. I knew that I had always wanted to be a teacher, um, however, it wasn't until after working some manual labor type jobs, um, installing underwater boat lifts as a diver installer, and also going over to South Korea as an English teacher. When I came back, I pursued a Master's of Education from Western at uh, night school, and in the meantime worked as a commercial artist doing graphic design. So it was absolutely wonderful that I ended up in Chimicum. It's just my greatest stroke of good luck. Having vacation in Port Townsend as a child, my father used to take us up cruising, and we would, of course, explore Fort Warden. It wasn't until just an extreme uh, good fortune that I ended up landing a job at Chimicum. You know, when I was getting my master's in education, it was the forecasts for receiving jobs sounded dire, um, the state budget cuts, and there seemed a lot of uncertain news about teachers. And a lot of school districts had hiring freezes and including a certain amount of layoffs. At this point, I was applying far and wide. I, I um, applied to different school districts up in Alaska, um, east of the mountains in Winthrop, here in Port Townsend, and also um, it was just just a great stroke of luck that I got hired at Chimica. I teach media productions at the high school level and also the middle school level. I teach digital photography and photojournalism, and I also teach a fine arts class, which is uh, broken up midweek to also do PE, so I consider myself a jack of all trades. This camera is uh, one of four that I purchased for the school. It's a Nikon, it's a D3000, and it's it's a simply a sort of a mid-range um, SLR, single lens reflex. I, th I felt it very important that I got SLRs for my program. You know, a lot of kids have, you know, cameras in their cell phone and whatnot, but it's really good to teach the fundamentals of photography when you have an SLR, such as this. I can explain sort of the background behind the camera mechanisms and also seeing the world com um, compositionally through the lens. Very fortunate to have a group of six student volunteers. Some are new to Chimicum actually as transfer students and some that I've had uh, in classes previously. This was a volunteer basis opportunity. Um, I, about two weeks prior to the event happening I made sure that I was able to drum up support and hype up the program, especially to those unfamiliar with the film festival, just as a way to get students to become involved. How a real production crew set is run, um, working with filmmaking talent, being able to, just to have and receive the exposure to filmmakers and producers and directors. So it's quite an exciting opportunity for young uh, students of media. It's been going terrifically. We're receiving some great compliments. So it's making uh, me feel confident and good that my students are well received. Coaching my students through the media process where we set up a set and strike it at the end and making sure that also the interpersonal skills are you know, polite and respectful. And so I'm hearing feedback already saying that people are pleased, um, not only that the operation of the media equipment is going smoothly, but as well they feel that they're um, welcomed and they're being listened to and um, the p politeness and the d respectful demeanor of my students certainly makes me proud. With my crew, none whatsoever. In fact, everyone's just willing to humbly approach the set as a learner, and so that's terrific. I do have discipline problems sometimes at the school, but none among my volunteer hour uh, students. Any teacher starting out new to the, the K-12 public school system shall certainly have um, a learning curve to do with when dealing with uh, discipline problems. The best way to approach this is to uh, keep, keep things relevant, uh, real world, making sure to include um, the bigger picture, understanding and being able to convey you know, why education and learning is lifelong. It's an entirely a process. And furthermore, working with media technology, it's really great to get uh, students hooked in um, in terms of allowing them and giving them the facilities to explore um, storytelling and giving voice to otherwise students that might be shy in expression otherwise. There's a job for everybody. Not all of my students are comfortable on camera, so we have some that are behind the scenes as technical support. We have some that are natural talents that enjoy being on screen. We have some students that are really interested in working with animation.
something that they perhaps have explored in the past have been different genres of animation such as stop motion or time lapse and I'm just here to s sort of bridge all these worlds together and provide uh, an outlet for students. So again as I've mentioned you know animation, the cinematography aspect. A lot of students are quite interested in uh, producing music videos and working with sound and sound editing. You know I try to incorporate all of that. We're starting out a new kind of exciting direction with my program which is 3D modeling. We have a very entry-level 3D printer called a MakerBot, which it actually prints with extruded plastic wire. Kids are really starting to see the relevancy and the excitement with designing in 3D and working with 3D modeling in a 3D environment, and particularly working with open source tools such as Blender, uh, which can be downloaded for either platform, Mac or PC, and they can continue, and as well, Google SketchUp is a great one. And it's an introductory way to get uh, students, you know, rapidly involved with learning the fundamentals of 3D modeling. That's a, a direction that I'm quite excited about. We're going to upload all of our source footage and continue editing it. Uh, we just use iMacs, and we have a lab of nine iMacs, two of which are newer, and um, the older iMacs are uh, 2009 era Intel chip iMacs. They s feel and seem somewhat dated and so it's going to be um, a bottleneck pressure at some point in the near future because space and memory processing power is limited. They've been functioning terrifically. In other words, I, my maintenance for them has just to upgrade the RAM but that's about it. I foresee a bottleneck perhaps in the near future where we hope to be at a position where we can purchase some more modern and higher speed Macs. We run video editing software from as simply as iMovie all the way up to Final Cut Pro depending on uh, the comfort level and the expertise of students. Some are quite excited to, and eager to jump right into Final Cut Pro but iMovie is just a terrific and easy user-friendly platform just to get students hooked. Yes, they're going to continue working with me closely. In fact, some have expressed interest just simply from being exposed to the filmmakers that they're, they're now wanting to make a movie and start working with producing narrative shorts. So that's exciting. This crew that I have with me today and this weekend are fulfilling uh, mandatory community service hours. So all of our high schoolers have a graduation requirement of fulfilling volunteer community service hours each year and so we're offering that um, to my crew for this weekend as well. It's, it's a great requirement in fact uh, you know a lot of different students do different things some are um, involved with food drives and, and the like but it's really really just such a great educational experience to be part of you know a real video set production crew here at the film festival simply just from networking and working in collaboration with you know all kinds of different people with various ranges of expertise. So I'd like to express my deep gratitude to the Port Townsend Film Institute. They are involved and in, in charge of setting up and running the Port Townsend Film Festival each year. Uh, specifically and primarily Jeanette Force and Jane Champion uh, board members and executive producers. They have been so integral in providing filmmakers um, each year of working at Chimicum. They've sent uh, different filmmakers um, to come up and speak with our students and have assembly-wide presentations and screenings of uh, various films from different genres. And they have been so generous, especially in um, volunteering their time to being able to speak with students even individually after the assembly has been finished by coming to our classroom and discussing uh, questions and answers further um, with students individually. So thank you very much for watching. We encourage you if anyone's interested in seeing student produced work there is a Chimicum Media website and it is www.squidguts.org and there they can see videos that are uploaded to YouTube broken up into all different category from narrative shorts to documentaries to animation to music videos and there's just such a wide selection I think it's just it's growing monthly and so far we've got close to I think a couple of hundred videos on that site so it's um, growing in scope and caliber enjoy the movies
Hi, I'm Mara Lepra. Welcome to the 13th Annual Port Townsend Film Festival. This venue is called Interviews at Undertown, and we are here now with J.J. Kelly and to talk about his film, Go Ganges. Is it not manual on the phone? No, it's on auto. Well, I mean, we're not going to do too much. Yeah. yeah. It's just people walking in front of it. Okay, you know, we should be fine. Yeah. Can we do a uh, mic check? Mic check. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three.